So check it out guys, this is Jay. And we decided to do a little bit of garden work tonight. We picked up these black lights from Lowe's to get into our tomatoes. And this is a tomato hornworm. Now you see how this black light makes that guy glow in the dark? I don't know if you can tell, but for us, it is a neon green. And all of the white stripes and the neon green are sticking out. We can see this guy against the purple foliage of the tomato plants. And we're going to pick a bunch of these guys off here and use them as for fishing bait. And for the rest of them, we're going to come in and treat them with that BT that we got in the mail tomorrow. But we're trying to get some fishing bait. And we're going to take these guys out. So keep rocking it with us. And we'll show you what we come up with at the end of the video. We'll see how many we can get out of here tonight. We're just going to do a run through and see what we can find. So keep rocking it. So what is growing on, guys? We had a late or early morning this morning. I was gonna say a late night last night, but it was actually early morning this morning. We were picking out those worms. It was like 1 2 o'clock a.m. We had to test out those black lights and they were amazing, but check out what's coming up now. This is pretty cool. Check it out, guys. There is a hawk up here on this line and it looked like it was eating a snake I'm pretty sure it was eating a snake up here we're gonna get out and look I'm not gonna take his snake because I know he's gonna be back but I will try to get a camera view of that hawk you can hear it calling out maybe There it went. And what was the guy eating? Ugh. He was eating a copperhead. You see this, guys? This is what we deal with in the garden. This is what we deal with in those patches of weed and beans and all of that. I will try to get a uh, zoom in on the slow motion video of the hawk that was eating this. He just flew off over in the distance there. I know he's right there flying around. Just landed in that tree up there. He's waiting on me to leave so it can come back and finish its dinner. But check it out guys what's going on. This is Jay and today is Tuesday 28th. July of 2020 that's a heck of a start to a video see that chopper head there he already ate half of them so that guy was at least three feet in length that's what we deal with in here so every day we come into these fields and do this work picking these weeds going in between these rows and all that stuff we deal with snakes all the time it is not something that's far and in between there's black snakes, black rat snakes that eat these copperheads. There are corn snakes, milk snakes, rattlesnakes, garter snakes, ringneck snakes, racer snakes, green vine snakes. They call them smooth green and rough green snakes. That's a lot. So we're going to get on back down the field and keep rocking them with us. We got some stuff to do today. We're getting a little bit of a late start. It's 12.50 p.m. And I'm in between fields, those beautiful fields of land graph, in between skies plots and air plots on the north end of the fields. I had a little bit of training on my insulin pump today, which is pretty awesome. I had a conference call meeting this morning, and there'll be more about that in future videos because you'll see me walking around with my cybernetic pancreas and all that stuff but um keep rocking it with us we're gonna get on down this field down down yonder then at that land graph land graph fields so uh keep rocking it with us back into the time lapse with you baby so guys that was a quick overview of a few of the 
most common species of snakes that we deal with in the garden there is a total of 22 species of snake in west virginia so i will put a picture of that at the bottom of the screen on the left hand side right now you can check that out this came out from marshall university this is a list of snakes of west virginia which is pretty neat stuff to know and today we are going to focus on tomatoes 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 we have a lot of tomato trellising to do today so we're going to take time and take care of our baby tomatoes in our tomato forest you guys have got to watch these tomato plants come along from seed so we planted these from seed and you got to watch us pound in these posts to trellis these tomatoes you got to watch us layer down our cardboard for conditioning the ground for these tomatoes to help keep the ground moist we have a lot of mycorrhizal fungi going on in this entire area because we have seeded this area with different species of mycorrhizal fungi so we often see different types of mushrooms growing underneath these tomatoes it's a great environment for plenty of types of wildlife under here it's pretty cool we have found blue cricket wasps i believe that's what they're called i'll find a picture and put that on the screen so you can see those we find different species of toads and felicia found one of those army worms that we've been battling eating holes in our tomatoes so we are also coming through even though we were just here early in the morning in the a.m of the 2 and 1 30 area picking out these worms we're going through in the daytime and picking out a few more i think we only found a total of three or four worms this day of the army worms and we found about a dozen of the tomato horn worms you can't see some of them they're deep in the leaves so we're going to definitely get in here and handle these a little bit better in the future but that's okay because that's what we're doing today we're going down and checking on all these plants as we do this trellising looking for worms and other pests and things like that now it's time for a quick lunch break gonna have a little bit of coffee and assess everything that we just got finished doing because we did get a lot done i think we did a total of eight lines of trellis on this day we ran trellis until we ran out of line to tie up our tomatoes we're gonna have to get some more line and get it in here which is pretty awesome because we're watching them grow up and some of them are almost taller than the trellis which means we're going to have a full wall of tomatoes and we're going to have tomatoes that's ready to go in about two weeks guys which is pretty awesome they'll be ready for some of the first markets and we have some larger tomatoes and plenty of cherry tomatoes on the way there's gonna be fried green tomatoes which is cool very cool guys fried green tomatoes are some of the top selling first tomatoes to go and what we are finding in here we're finding broccoli heads for one thing which is pretty awesome and we're finding harlequin beetles which is not so cool because they're doing damage as you can see to some of the holes on these leaves but that's okay we're going to get in and treat for them we will take off the bottom leaves as we'll have to do that anyway as brussels sprouts if you really want brussels sprouts you have to remove the bottom leaves so we don't mind they're in here eating on the top leaves we'll take them home and cut them up into greens but as of right now we have a little bit of harvesting to do so we're going to go through and do a little bit of that get prepared to do a little bit of that type stuff we need to take out some cucumbers and some squash so felicia is going to go through and cut out some of this squash this is the yellow crookneck squash and further up the field we have yellow straight neck squash but this is pretty cool we love these little hills with squash we came in on the bottom of these hills and did some heavy mulching which it creates a entire little micro environment around each plant there's three plants in each hill and i'm also reseeding some of the cucumbers that died back from those vines while we're harvesting cucumbers felicia's doing the squash on one side and she's doing cucumbers on her right side 
check out those little baby pumpkins. They are starting to turn orange, which is pretty awesome. I'm excited about that. And it looks like she is checking on the baby watermelons, the watermelon water babies, which is pretty cool. We are starting to find little watermelons. And that is pretty awesome. I'm excited about that. First time ever growing watermelons. And have a look at that pumpkin. Check it out, guys. We're down here in the field. We did a little bit of replanting some cucumbers because the drought last week had some of our vines die back. There's a train going by. So I'm going to let it go on by. We've been harvesting cucumbers and squash, trying to take everything else off of the plants. That way we can relieve stress on the vines that didn't die out. And uh, what we did, we come in and reseeded more cucumbers right into the hills that had vines die out. Because some of the areas down here are quite sandy. Cucumbers love that type of thing, but when it dries out too much, you have this sort of thing happened. See that hill? That one is dead. Completely gone. I reseeded that one. Some of them made it. Some of them are doing okay. We've been getting some cucumbers out. I'll take you over and check this out. We got some acorn squash coming on to the plant. Here's an even bigger one. There's my hand for comparison. So it's a little bit bigger than a softball. We've also got little baby watermelons, watermelons, water babies. Let's see if I can find one and I will point it out. One thing that I noticed, we planted some moon and stars watermelon and they have these speckles on the plants. I'm pretty sure the plants come like that and that's not any kind of mold or anything, but we'll find out. It's my first year of growing those. So we really don't know, to be honest. And I know there's some water babies in here because I've seen them. And I'm gonna find you one and take you in to check those out. I think it's actually back down this way, but I'll show you this tiny one. Look at that tiny water baby. And it's not really big. None of them's really big right now. It's a small watermelon species. They are crimson sweet watermelons, so they don't get huge. They make a nice size little melon. We need to get in here and do some weeding, but we're not gonna worry about it today because there is rain coming, hopefully. Let's hope for that rain to seed in those seeds. Um, what else can I show you in this block before we move out? I'm gonna take you and show you some of the sugar baby pumpkins check this out guys the pumpkins are turning orange so those sugar babies well we're gonna get out of here we still have some more tomatoes to trellis we've got two species of caterpillar that are attacking our tomatoes we got tomato hornworms and there is some type of striped caterpillar I don't know if it's the same ones that I discovered or we discovered in our brassicas we'll check that out to see I've got some of them here with me if any of you guys know and I don't get it identified by the time we get there let me know what they are we're taking them home we're gonna put them in quarantine to find out what they do we also have an infestation of harlequin beetles that's not very cool not very nice so we're gonna have to get in and treat it's not gonna be today it's supposed to rain today and I'm not trying to waste any of my BT or neem oil because that stuff is expensive. It costs to do organic stuff. So keep rocking it with me. And uh, we're going to go up here and trail some more tomatoes and harvest some more squash. And I'll show you what we get harvested today. We already harvested a lot of squash, a lot of cucumbers, and I'm out. So a little bit of harvesting what we got going on what we got growing on in this day a little bit of tomato trellising pretty awesome 
I feel pretty satisf satisfied satisfied with what we got done. We're gonna do a little bit more harvesting of those straight neck yellow squash. This 100 foot row of 25 plants has been producing amazing. So you can see we're taking plants out of every other row. We have mustard green that will be ready soon. We're gonna do a little bit more trellising today because these plants are getting quite tall and they're almost ready to be at the top of these trellises. We're not gonna have many more lines to tie before they reach that tallest height. And after I get every one of the lines trellised onto there, we tie it to every post. And there are 11 posts in here. We tie it to all of the center posts in between the ends to make sure that the line doesn't move anywhere. And this is a pretty good size area of tomatoes, guys. These rows are 106 foot long from end to end. There are four rows spread out three feet apart. This entire area is a totally different micro ecosystem that's going on down here within the soil and the plants and the insects that live here, the insects and caterpillars that is. Um, it's been an amazing experience getting to see this micro environment and all of the wildlife that it has to offer. It's definitely been a learning year for us in this area. I love getting in there and getting my hands dirty and identifying all the different species of creatures that inhabit these areas biology and ecology is totally my thing permaculture farming agriculture all of those different types of cultures even bacterial cultures we do fungal cultures all different types of sciences going on with all of this especially when it comes to feeding our plants we get to learn about the chemistry that goes on because there's also chemistry involved in how these plants take up and use nitrogen and it's not just the plants that go on in that process there are also bacteria there are also fungi and it's a whole range of ecological conditions we have to do pruning which is what i'm doing right now i'm removing some of the branches to give these plants a little bit more nutrients aimed at the fruit instead of the vegetative growth that comes from the leaves you can see on some of these plants where the hornworms have come through and eaten the tops of the leaves down and what right now what I'm doing I'm going through and I'm training some of the vines to grow inside of the trellis that we just put up inside of the wall and what we normally do when we put the line on, I'll tie a loop around, put it around the end of the pole, stretch it out all the way down to the end, around both sides, pull it tight, take it all the way back down the opposite side, I'll put a loop in, and I'll cut the line to go through, and then I'll cinch it down and tie a half hitch knot to hold it in place, which is pretty awesome, and then we run back through and tie it to each individual pole just like I'm doing there. And then at the end of the year, if we want to reuse this line, we can just cut out the lines that hold the main line to the poles and we can roll it up. But my intentions at the end of the year is to leave this trellis up and hopefully get a crop of peas at the end of the year. I don't know if it will produce, but the idea is to put nitrogen back into the soil with the peas, not actually to get a crop of peas, but to let those nitrogen fixing bacteria that thrive on the root nodules of the plants and feed on them to put nitrogen back into the soil for next year's crop of tomatoes. And then in the spring, we will plant another crop of peas there to do a double crop of nitrogen. And the ones in the spring, hopefully they will produce before we get tomatoes into the ground. But we're gonna take you back through those beautiful fields of Landgraf McDowell County, West Virginia. We have a lot growing on down here. There's beans all to my left, squash and zucchini, beans, corn to the left on this side. 
and we're going to take you for a ride through those beautiful mountains you can check out the beautiful mountain views of this ride this is what beautiful west virginia wild and wonderful west virginia has to offer mcdowell county anyway you can see why the four-wheeler riders come here and they love to ride on those trails so these are those trails they get to ride on all through these beautiful mountains you can see those beautiful mountain tops curvy roads it's a country dream this is the place this is where it's at west virginia has some of the only three percent of the world's drinkable groundwater which is pretty awesome so there's a few facts in there for you you have to learn a little bit about snakes a little bit about bugs a little bit how to treat bugs you have to learn a little bit about tomatoes i hope a little bit about bacteria because that's what we do so thank you guys thank you for watching that's it that's the end of the video that's all i hope you found some information in there i hope you found plenty of inspiration in there you can like the video if you liked it you can subscribe for more videos and future videos hit the notification bell for future videos and updates on those and keep rocking it with us until next time can you dig it